Hello furniture refinishing friends, this is Shannon with Black Sheep House. In today's video we're taking this table that has a thin wood veneer on it and we're going to be taking the finish off, stripping it with chemical stripper and making it light wood and then sealing it with a nice durable uh, sealant that's going to last, uh, you know, at least a decade. And uh, I'm happy to share all this with you and take you through my process of uh, getting this wood from outdated to updated for my client. This table is a nice big table and it's got a couple of leaves. I think my client paid around $80 for it. She found it on Facebook Marketplace and was really excited. It's going to be a job though, you know. It is... <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the kind of thing that you want to do outside and it's great because it's spring right now nice weather for working outdoors I've got my clean strip chemical stripper it's 15 minute formula so far that's the one that works the best for me there are other greener options if you want to go that route but honestly uh, you know I've time is money I got to get this project done I'd love to have a greener solution but that works, but I just haven't found that yet. And this project, I've got my mask on. I've got my chemical stripper. I bought this at Walmart. Um, I went ahead and bought the big container of it since I do so much furniture stuff. So but you, they have a smaller one as well. And you'll just want to get that all over your surface to start. Remember, this is a veneer wood table that I'm working on. And I've had some experiences in the past where the chemical stripper actually lifted the wood veneer off. So I'm going to be extra careful around the edges. I'm not going to glop on a bunch of chemical stripper on the edges because I don't want it to eat through the glue and loosen things up to where I have lifting and whatnot. I just, I'm going to sand those um, edges anything that gets missed but you can see I'm being real careful trying to just get it as close as I can to it and I do eventually apply some chemical stripper on there but not I don't leave it on as long as I left the chemical stripper on the rest of the piece which is the instructions say 15 minutes another thing that you can do and I've seen this circulating around the internet is you can put saran wrap on top of your chemical stripper especially if you're working out in the heat and it's you know drying up on you too quickly i didn't mess with that but honestly i probably should have because it was a little warmer outside than i anticipated um, as the sun started coming out and stuff so saran wrap or working in the shade probably would have been a good idea but I'm using a disposable brush that's just a cheap dollar store brush. I get a pack of three of those and I will throw it away. And I'm using a scraper that I also got at Walmart. It's a pretty heavy duty plastic scraper. You could use a metal scraper as well, but you wanna be careful because the wood is soft when you're doing this process and you don't want to gouge it or anything. I have used a like a plaster scraper before and it melted it so you do definitely need something that's a little bit more heavy duty plastic i'm using a cake pan to scrape off the uh, remaining residue uh, stripper in there uh, you could use a cardboard box as well that works really good and i'm gonna have some kitty litter i'll show you guys later in the video but kitty litter you need to have on hand so you can just sprinkle it in the um, chemical stripper and dry it all up before you throw it away because you don't want to leave just a pile you know a soaking wet chemical stripper just out anywhere you know you got to be on the safe side so you can use cardboard to absorb it or paper or um, just anything you have on hand that would like absorb it but kitty litter works great and it you know it's not flammable I have a wire brush that I'm using around the edges and you know i did apply the chemical stripper around the edges just not um i didn't leave it on there as long like i mentioned earlier and there you go i've got my box out now because i filled up that pan pretty quickly <laughs> always wear gloves during this wear a mask work outside if if, if at all possible P please do this outside <laughs> or at least with your garage door all the way open and right next to it
I clean the table off with mineral spirits and then I let it dry. And look, there's like a little face there. Do you guys see that? I always see faces everywhere I go. I don't know. <laughs> Just something. But anyway, I, you know, let it dry. The mineral spirits is great for removing the gunk and buildup and all that jazz. And then I've got my gator sandpaper. Uh, I found that at Walmart as well. And then I'm just gonna sand this guy down. And again, double mask. I'm using the COVID mask and then my respirator as well on top of it. This respirator is from Amazon and you can shop it on my Amazon storefront. Although I just started doing that and I don't know if uh, it's actually going to, I don't know if I'm gonna make any money on that. <laughs> Everybody's like, you need an Amazon storefront. I'm like, okay, I did it. And it's zero dollars. So, you know, it's hard making money on the internet. <laughs> okay, so this veneer is very thin. I mentioned that earlier. I'm being extra careful when I'm sanding. I do eventually break through the veneer on one spot, and I'll show you guys that later. Don't worry, it didn't affect the effect, the effect, effect. I don't know. It, did, it didn't mess up the project because I was doing a light wood finish and so I was able to uh, blend it in. But there's the kitty and the doggy playing in the backyard. That never gets old. <laughs> I love having them nearby. Although when I was doing the chemical strip where everybody was banned and uh, had to stay inside. So I love sanding outside too. It's so nice not to get my workspace all dusty. It's been really, really nice in Georgia lately. The spring weather has just been beautiful. But sanding off any remaining stuff, I I thought that I might sand the bottom versus using chemical stripper on the legs, but after sanding for just a little bit on the bottom, I was like, oh, forget this. I'm breaking out the chemical stripper. So you can see side on the right, I've sanded already, and the side on the left is just where the chemical stripper and then the mineral spirits did their thing. Again, I think if you wrapped it in saran wrap, like um, or like I've seen so many people on the internet doing lately, I think that that would really help things. So I'm gonna do that next time. But there it is where I broke through the veneer, bummer, but it's just part of it, you know. Um, it's so funny how thin these veneers are. Like they are so, the wood part, the decorative like looking wood part is so thin. And then the veneer itself, is about like the thickness of a dime or a penny or something, but that like actual part that has the wood grain on it is so freaking thin, which is why I opted for chemical stripper on this piece in the first place. I just didn't want to risk it. I have, you know, I don't know. And I usually hand sand if I'm not gonna use chemical stripper on these types of thin veneers, but it's such a beautiful table. The base is solid wood. So again, I broke out my stripper and I did the base with the same stuff. I, oh, <laughs> it looks like I just built it. Um, I put it in the little jar here. Those are the jars that I use to um, give people touch up paint or, you know, when I sell my furniture pieces, those little jars, I get them at Walmart or Kroger. They're like the little jam jars. They remind me of my grandma on her homemade jam. But the, I, that's what I use to, you know, paint it on. I poured it in there and painted it on with the disposable brush and yep all the same process again I think saran wrap would have helped in this case too just wrapping it and keeping it from drying because they say um when you use these chemical strippers it's actually like a chemical reaction that's happening beneath the surface which is why you don't want to paint it around too much or move it around once it starts working because you don't want to let the gas out uh, I don't know. I, I, you have to, you can research that, but basically like the more you can saturate the surface and let the stuff work underneath, the better. So here it is after 15 minutes, I start scraping it with my scraper and then I have a copper scrub pad and I had a stainless steel scrub pad as well. And I'm using that to help remove this stuff. It is a little bit trickier on the legs because you can't use the scraper as much and it doesn't just, you know, slide right off. Generally, I would paint the legs, but these legs were so beautiful um, and solid wood and I just love the shape of them and I thought, oh, it'd be a real shame to paint them. So here we are <laughs> stripping it all down. I've got my metal brush. This is uh, how I would do it on furniture as well. If I had like ornate 
pieces that had a lot of decorative details and stuff I'd get the chemical stripper out and my wire brush and get to work on those nooks and crannies At this point, it's going to be personal preference what you want to do with your raw wood. You could condition it and then stain it any color you want, but I'm going for a light uh, bleached wood look, you know, but this, this wasn't orange or too red, so I didn't need to bleach the wood, although I was prepared to do that if that was the case. And I'm going to do a taupe wash, which you can do with any kind of uh, tan taupe paint that has more of the green undertones, because you want to think about those green undertones canceling out the yellows and the oranges, the red tones in your, in your furniture. And um, you can do this with water or you can do it with a clear coat like I'm doing. I think I like the water way better. So normally what I'll do is half water and half the taupe paint. And it can be any paint really, just the cheap sample paints or, you know, bare or whatever you've got on hand. Um, but it does need to be something that's got like that greenish undertone to help cancel out the reds if you're going for the look I'm going for. Again, it's totally your call and however you want to make this wood look is uh, your, your options are limitless. Now, I'm personally a big fan of testing before I go for it on the big piece. And so I'm just going to test out my mixture and make sure I like it. And you can see where I've already tested something else out as well. And that's how I came upon uh, figuring out that the taupe wash worked anyway. Because back when I started refinishing furniture, everyone was doing whitewash and their wood was pink. And there was only one girl, um, Forgotten Gems on Instagram, who really had the color that I was going for. But she wasn't like doing tutorials and sharing her information. And so I had to figure this out the hard way and then... Uh, now, you know, like everybody does it now and I don't know if they figured it out on their own like me or, you know, it just word. I think word <laughs> caught on pretty quick in my circle, that's for sure, when I started posting about taupe washes. And they really do give you that uh, really nice look and yeah, you know, here we are. <laughs> but yeah, I remember even the big YouTubers, their furniture was like straight up pink anytime they did like a, like a, paint wash you know that was a white wash because if you think about it like makeup you know what is white going to do to a red tone it's going to turn it pink <laughs> so just a little bit of color theory will take you a long way in this business as well and uh yeah so 
something with a green undertone is going to cancel out the reds but the taupe is also going to stay on the furniture and give it that that color now the way that i did it with the clear coat and the paint mixture and then wiping it away with the cloth it it gave it a multi-dimensional multi it's almost like highlights so i had pieces that were coming through that were more the yellow tone of the wood and then i have the lighter tone of the taupe coming through versus if you do a paint wash which again i think i i like that better it is going to be more even and consistent if you do the water and paint mixture at least in my experience that's what i have found but you do get a little bit more like a little bit more coverage full coverage i guess is a good way to put it you're still going to be able to see the grain but it's going to be fully covered versus being a little bit more like the way i applied it it's a little bit more hit and miss in certain spots which is still really beautiful this table is a stunner i mean it, it's such a beautiful table by the time i'm done it makes me really want to get one of my own <laughs> because this isn't for me, this is a, a paid project. Speaking of paid, I'm gonna do a whole video, guys, and share with you how to charge, and, because I get that question a lot, and um, you know what rate you should charge. So what I do, personally, is I will charge, it, it ends up being about $35 an hour. I consider $30 an hour for my work, and then $5 an hour for like my supplies kind of thing. That's how mentally I have it in my head. And I consider each step is usually, I break it up into an hour. So it took me an hour to clean the piece, took me an hour to sand the piece, took me an hour to, um, you know, paint the piece. Well, this piece is a little different because it did the stripping and stuff. But so that's how I will bill my personal um, independent projects and stuff like that. Anyway, so here we are getting into the clear coat. I wanted something really durable and uh, an oil based is going to be more durable, although it does yellow or amber as they call it over time. So you could go with a water based product if you just want zero yellowing over time. But I find that, you know, that that yellowing really only matters on pieces that are white or like a light color. On something like this that is a wood look, you're not going to really notice that yellowing too much. And I'm putting on a, a pretty thin coat of it. And then I actually do go through with the water-based bare uh, polyurethane on top to give it a more matte finish. That's just how I did it. You could do a million different ways. For whatever reason, I was having a lot of bubbles when I was applying this uh, oil-based polyurethane by Minwax with a brush so I switched over to a method I know works really well and that's using a staining pad and I just use my tack cloth clean it off clean off the table and then I'll just wipe it on there the, it applies a very thin coat of it it's almost like using wipe on poly it applies such a thin coat but it's great and that's what I did and then I also went over it with after it was fully dry the oil based which took a day or so I went over it with a water-based polyurethane with the same method. My, You could either use, you guys have seen me use a lot, the sponge rollers to apply top coat. And so you could do that or you could use another staining pad, uh, whatever you want. The rollers go on there. It gives it a little thicker, but I don't think you can use rollers with the oil-based stuff. I think it like disintegrates or something, but this will amber over time. I'm okay with that. It's such a thin coat and it's on a wood surface you're really not going to beat the durability of an oil-based top coat but i'm telling you these water-based top coats are great as well you're not going to regret applying a water-based top coat i don't think unless you are just putting like i don't know what you'd be doing to your your table you know um but the water-based top coats these days are so durable even the organic ones i used earth safe finishes organic and non-toxic uh, water-based top coat on my table and it's held up so well it's doing a great job and um you know i think that you can't go wrong a lot of people are so scared that their furniture after they've worked so hard on it is going to get damaged but if you apply 
a top coat you know it's you see these people that have damaged furniture that didn't apply a top coat at all so that's a lot different than applying a top coat even if it is a you know a gentler top coat it's still going to be really durable unless you've got it outside or something okay here speaking of outside here's our table outside and here it is all staged inside and finished it's so beautiful i wish you guys could see it in person it's just so pretty the base, the legs, uh, it has so much character. It's so warm and inviting. It really makes me want a table just like this in my dining room, a little breakfast nook area now. <laughs> it's just so pretty. I think it'll be a while before I do another stripping job <laughs> because it's so much work. But uh, really happy with how it turned out. Like I said, I do a few things differently. I think I would saran wrap the stripper to make it work a little faster like I've seen on the internet. And then I think I would use the water-based paint wash instead of the clear coat-based paint wash like I did. Uh, the water-based is just a little bit more even and all over and just gives a lighter effect. So that's what I would do differently, but it's still so beautiful. I'm so happy with this project. It's a stunner. Really beautiful table. If you did something like this, it would sell so fast. Uh, thanks so much for watching this, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.